Hello friends, followers and dear flight simmers. Welcome back to another episode in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have been trying to publish this video and face some technical difficulties. This video was supposed to be published two days ago, but somehow my video editing software decided to break on me. So what happened is I processed the video and what I received as the outcome was a black screen with audio. Therefore, I had to redo the editing and then I get a warning from the software saying the video file is corrupt. So I have to re-record and that's what I'm doing here now. We are here at Sabiha Gökçen International Airport in Istanbul. And we are wearing Anadolu Jet colors which is a low cost carrier operating under Turkish Airlines and we will be taking a flight from Istanbul to Antalya airport south coast of Turkey uh, and do a full flight tutorial with the PMDG 737-800 what a beautiful view we have here I like this aircraft a lot and I love looking at the airframe and the reflection of light uh, around the aircraft's body all right we'll do a full flight as i said uh, we will start cold and dark and carry out all the procedures as close as possible and try to i'll try to demonstrate what i do when i'm flying with 737 800 uh, and how to prepare it for takeoff climbing cruise descent arrival approach landing that type of thing without further ado let's jump into the cockpit and start our flight here we are in the cockpit of 737-800 we are cold and dark and just to mention i think it's important i am using a different cold and dark setup than the default pmdg cold and dark i changed some of the switch positions such as engine bleeds are showing off not sure this is true to real life but uh, i think leaving them on is not going to hurt anything this is just trying to give myself a couple more things to remember and practice uh, along with that um, i have the standby power guard open and i think that's all changes i made uh, aside from transponder squawking 2000 instead of one two three four and then the stab trim switches are unguarded and moved to the down position. So those are the changes I made to my cold and dark setup. All right, let's get started. First thing we need to do is the electrical power up procedure. We will immediately call and request a ground power unit. While it's connecting, We'll take a look at a couple things and because I have a cold and dark tutorial, I'm gonna go through this a little bit quickly and do not do the fire tests or the other tests that I did in the uh, first video. But you get the deal, I'll tell you when, when those are done. First, we need to make sure a couple things are in the correct positions, such as the wipers and Electrical hydraulic pumps, parking brake set. We also have chocks, but I'd like to set parking brake at this point. And uh, throttles are idle, uh, fuel levers are at the cutoff position, speed brake is stowed, and flaps are retracted. We'll go ahead and turn the battery power on. We started to use some battery, some systems are coming to life. We'll close the standby power guard and we'll arm the emergency exit lights while we are here. Why not? So now we need to introduce uh, ground power or AC power to the aircraft. But before doing so, we need to ensure we are seeing three green lights for the landing gear lever and the lever is in fact down position. Uh, you can do the oxygen test. And check the circuit breakers. 
Make sure all the lights are configured as required. Uh, window heat is off, probe heat is off, and isolation valve is open and packs are off. Fuel pumps are already off, so it's safe to introduce power to the aircraft. And that gives us the AC power we need to start aligning our, our IRS system. Switches that are there. We'll go first and test the system. All lights are functioning. This might take some time to test it, but we'll go to the heading status and then move the switches to the arms, uh, the nav position, and it is going to start aligning our system. All right. The other tests we did here is the flaps. Mac air speed warning and then stall test. For stall test to work, you need to be on AC power at least more than four minutes. And while that's done, uh, we will worry about our overhead panel later on uh, after configuring our FMC. Before starting to program our flight, we need to load our aircraft. You can do it this with two ways, one using the ground services of PMDG, which will take longer uh, if you also selected the realistic uh, load times and boarding times, or you can use the fuel and payload submenus to select your desired fuel and refuel the aircraft as well as your passengers and the, the cargo, which is what I'm gonna do to keep the tutorial short, but if I'm by myself, I usually use the ground services to get a little bit more realism. The block fuel we need today is 5.887 or 5887 kilograms. We will round it up to 6000 and we'll take 6 tons of fuel on board. That is now loaded. Our passenger count, according to the flight plan in Simbrief, is 163 passengers and 4.1 tons of cargo. When I'm entering the cargo, I usually put less on the forward and more on the aft cargo compartment, like five, 600 kilograms difference between two. So 4.1 tons, which means I can take 1.7 to the front and then 2.4 to the aft that will add up to 4.1. All that's done, we can go into the FMC and start programming our flight. Model is verified, air cycle is valid, and we'll go to the pause init page. Reference airport Lima Tango Foxtrot Juliet. I think we are at ramp 9er 9er well it's not in the database so let's not worry about it we'll go to the next page grab one of the GPS positions and enter it to here when you see boxes in the Boeing FMC that means it's expecting you to enter information we have that in place now the system will align itself based on these coordinates and we'll start programming our route here you can simulate the ACAR system if you download the flight plan from Simbrief or you can enter it manually which is what I'm going to do for today's flight. Our destination is Lima Tango Alpha India and our flight number for today's flight is TK7518. All right. We are going to be departing from runway 06. We don't. We are not using ATC, so this might change. But 06 is the preferred runway for Sabia Gökçen International Airport. Next up is to select our departure. According to our operational flight plan, we will be departing from runway 06 via Roksu. 3 Juliet departure. So runway 06 is already selected. Rocks to 3 Juliet. 
and we'll go back to the route. Next page, that's our first waypoint with our SID. From Roksuk, we are going to take an airway uniform November 617. and that will take us to airbag and we will take uniform tango 305 from there you can type the airways and it is going to find the correct intersection but you need to verify this or you can type the intersection and then keep going uh, with the next airway from here we are going to take uniform tango 35 and this should take us to intersection take though yes it does and then uniform tango 35 to babsa that's the final waypoint and then our arrival starts from there we will be doing an ILS Zulu approach to runway 36 right via the babs 1 alpha arrival No transition, LRA is the VOR at Antalya International Airport and this is a procedure approach, uh, in other words it's the published procedure with a teardrop pattern where you cross the VOR, uh, fly above the airport and then turn around for landing, but we are not gonna do that because our routing should take us to the uh, initial approach fix. We'll go to the legs page, put the ND to plan mode increase the range just a bit and then we will verify our waypoints by stepping through the waypoints to make sure we don't have any craziness in there we might get some vectors to final and we'll clean that up and see what happens so far departure looks okay and then that's our cruising altitude and cruising flight plan path that's the final waypoint and then our approach into runway 36 right starts here and as you see we don't have anything this dashed line goes to infinity because the aircraft doesn't know how to get from this waypoint to the center fix of runway 36 right and this white dashed line you see here is marking the 10 miles uh, from the, the runway we will probably clear these vectors by going copying the waypoint and pasting over the vectors and that will give us a little bit of sharp turn but we can switch to heading mode and manage that ourselves as well so it's okay to leave it uh, with vectors activate the route we are happy so we will execute that and then it will turn to magenta saying this is our flight plan routing done so that's the FMC part, we will initialize, do the performance initialization and other stuff when we are getting ready to push back. But let's go and do our flows starting with the overhead panel. Speaking of which, we'll do left to right, top to bottom, and uh, verify everything. So the flight control uh, switches are guarded for systems A and B. Alternate flaps switch is guarded, Yaw damper comes on, uh, VHF, NAV and IRS FMC systems are on normal positions, uh, display source is auto and control panel is also in normal position. We'll check the cross feed valve, bright blue dim, bright blue off, that works. Fuel pumps should stay off for now until we are ready to start the APU. Uh, we are receiving ground power, battery is not draining, so all is looking good here. All the guards are closed over here, and generators are not on the bus, because we are using ground power at the moment. Nothing to worry here. Mid panel, we can give some integral lighting. Now we have passengers magically loaded, we can turn the seatbelt signs on and chime the cabin. Wiper stays in the park position, nothing to do at the engine start knobs and the switch, ignition selector switch. We'll turn the window heat on, probe heat will remain off until we are ready to taxi, electrical hydraulic pumps will remain off, 
nothing to worry about the pressurization system same for the bleed air system and the AC system but we will set our cruising altitude and our cruising altitude today is going to be flight level 310 so we'll set our pressurization system to our cruising altitude we'll also set the landing altitude for Antalya which I believe was 180 some feet so 200 should do it for us we can check the charts for that I should have the flight plan already loaded here yep and if we check the approach chart airport elevation is 177 so 200 works for us that part is done no additional lights are required at this point we'll program the MCP after calculating our performance figures pedestal not too much to worry here as well put these to on positions we'll get some panel lighting and turn the ADF radio on transponder is ok trims are neutral so everything good is, is good over here at this point we can guard the step trim switches if you forget to do this if you are using a similar cold and dark setup you won't be able to engage the autopilot because this is what uh, controls the step trim when autopilot is in, uh, in place and uh, flying the aircraft okay so really not too much to do right now so we'll go and calculate our performance zero fuel weight the sim brake profile I have gives it very accurately it's showing 60.4 tons for our zero fuel weight and this usually is super close or uh, spot on we'll take that reserve fuel according to sim brief the reserve fuel we need for our alternate and the uh, total reserves we have is 2.59 or 4 so it will round it up to 2.6 cost index for this flight is 31 and our cruising level as I mentioned before is 310 and it's giving the uh, the best cruise level or the optimum cruise level so we are also close to that what happened 310 please okay cruise wind will take the top of climb wind I can share with you where I see it We nav or we nav will not engage and we'll do the M1 limits. What I'm doing over here because we don't have a or at least I don't have a Boeing performance calculator, I am just doing some guesswork here by first starting with 60 degrees as my selected temperature and 22k D rate and I try to stay around 86.97 somewhere there. This number will change when you have a bleed air system running. Uh, without bleed air, this will show higher numbers, but the aircraft will sort itself out. So I'm happy with this. We'll go and take our takeoff speeds. We will be departing with flaps 5. Our CG is 20. And V1, 145. V rotate, 145. And V2, 146. 
we program or set the speed bar to V2, which is 146. We will also set the runway heading, that is 59 for runway 06. Also set the course to 59, because that will be also our final approach course if we had to do a turn around and uh, return back to the departure airport in the event of an emergency. So that is now done. Now radios, at this point we can tune the closest VOR station, which is Sabiha here and that is 108.8 .8. this is again a secondary measure or navigational aid if we have to return back to the airport to find it easily I, we are reading the information there too and that's pretty much MCP done except the initial climb altitude if you check the departure chart, you'll see we have a hard 7000 restriction, 7000 or below restriction on our departure. And if we were using ATC, that will be probably what we will get from ATC as our departure clearance, which is right here. So we will use this and set 7000 for the altitude and that's pretty much the MCP part done. We can turn on the flight directors now. They are over here and pilot side will be the master. We'll check the weather information and SIM Toolkit Pro and that weather information is 1018. We'll set the pressure to 1018. And pretty much done with that too. The winds are coming from 020 at 7 knots so it makes sense to use runway 6 we will have a little bit of crosswind uh, I'm seeing clouds and visibility ok so that's good temperature is 18 degrees dew point is 16 and that's about it so we programmed the FMC we programmed the MCP we configured our overhead panel uh, we have our pedestal information or everything in the pedestal is done and we are ready to actually start the APU and uh, call for pushback so we'll turn the aft fuel pump on and then we will do the checklist after we start the APU to make sure we have done everything correctly start the APU now This will take a while, we all know that, but we can go and check outside a little bit. Or we can check the airport chart to see how our taxi routing will look like. So we are here and we will probably take Quebec and then Delta and Delta 1 to runway 06. That's the expected taxi routing. If we were using ATC, that's what they will probably give us. So which means we need to push the tail to the right and nose to the left when we are pushing back. Cool, that's done. And APU should be available any minute now. There it is. We'll put the generators, APU generator on bus and check the voltage. You should do this first and then put the bus generator on the bus to make sure you have electrical power before making the change. We can now tell grant services to remove the grant power char card and the chucks because we are getting ready for pushback. To prepare the aircraft for pushback, there is really not much left to do. We'll turn the APU air or APU bleed on. Hex will come on momentarily and we'll do an overhead scan to make sure everything is in fact correctly done we need to close our doors i see the doors open signal here so let's go ahead and do that as well and we should see these lights extinguished 
and that's pretty much preparing for pushback so fuel pumps will come on we'll tell the GSX to start the pushback and while we are doing this we'll put the anti-collision lights on and electrical hydraulic pumps to on that is pretty much everything we need to do here before we push back MCP is set Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. IRS is aligned and we are getting ready for pushback one thing we didn't do is the trim that's reading 5.97 here so we will set the trim wheel to 5.97 this trim wheel is kind of slow so it's gonna take a little bit to get to 5.97 so just 5 just a little bit more and we should be trimmed nicely that should do for 5.97 and they are preparing the aircraft for pushback. We are almost ready. So packs will come off. We will need the bleed air. Locking gear. Everything else is configured. I'll just go through the checklist very quickly. APU is on, position lights are at steady, emergency exit lights on, passenger signs are on, packs are auto, high, IRS mode selectors are on nav, FMC is set, transponder is set, indicated airspeed is set, heading is set to the runway uh, heading, we are pushing the tail to the right, nose to the left, or we can quick edit which will get us to the external wheel and I can show you how you can do this if you are a GSX user uh, to correct your pushback position so Numpad 1 and 3 will rotate the aircraft if you hold shift it will rotate a little bit faster up and down arrows will move the aircraft back and forth and left and right will move up and down or sideways and holding shift in all the positions will result in faster movement I think we need to rotate a bit more and I'm happy with this pushback uh, location and that's Quebec that we need to take and then that's the Delta taxiway voltage which will take us to the runway I'm sorry, this is Quebec, this is Delta Taxiway, that's the actual runway. We will enter. So we accepted the pushback, it's asking us to release the parking brakes. Okay. Release parking brakes, please. Parking brakes are released. All All is start off with Alright, we will start right engine first. We are monitoring the N2, waiting for that to reach 22% or more, and we will introduce fuel. It is 22%, we'll introduce fuel and check the valves. They should go bright and then they should extinguish. Now we are waiting for the engine to spool up and the start valve to close so that we can start the left engine. We are seeing fuel flow, ignition, EGT is rising, and M1 rotation. So that's the sign of a good engine start as well as increasing oil pressure. Right, the starter is disengaged. We can start the left engine. Again, monitoring N2. Oil pressure is increasing. We are waiting for 22% or more. Please set parking brakes. Introducing fuel. 
parking bay side. Make your confirmation for a good engine start. Two rot and one rotation, EGT, fuel flow, so that's a good engine start. We can confirm good engine start and ask them to leave. Contact to ground. ground. We have a good, good engine start. start. You can disconnect. They will disconnect the pushback tug and we will wait for the engine to uh, spool up and finish its startup cycle. Right, looks like we have two good engine starts. We'll put the engine generators on bus, first checking the voltage for Gen 1 and Gen 2. They are looking okay. Put it to bus. That's now on the bus. Packs are coming to auto. Isolation valve to auto and the circulation valves to auto as well we don't need APU anymore engine bleeds will come on APU bleed will come off contract disconnected bypass been removed APU will be off left is clear end. right is clear we have the pushback completed he's gonna take the bypass pin and hold the pin in his hand and then we are going to be ready for our taxi to the runway We'll have a couple more things to do before taxiing, so let's go through the checklist one more time. Before taxi checklist, generators 1 and 2 online, probe heat coming on, wing anti-ice, engine anti-ice not required, packs are auto, isolation valve auto, APU bleed off, APU is off, engine start switches goes to continuous for takeoff, flaps we will set to flaps 5. Alright, flaps 5 set and we will verify over here when they extend. Elevator trim is set for takeoff. Flight controls, we'll check the flight controls. During the yoke back, go to the system page, pull forward, pull back, pull left, pull right, right rudder, center, left rudder, center. Flight controls are free and correct and we'll do a recall nothing here we have an fmc message unable to do 240 knots we'll deal with that here in a second lower display unit now we can blank this we don't need it anymore taxi lights are on and runway turn off lights are as required so the message we got is saying unable to do 240 knots at fj050 we'll keep the legs page here we'll keep the takeoff uh, speeds here and this is uh, 240 or below so we can change that to 220 and hopefully the aircraft will accept that and that should give us what we need and we shouldn't be seeing another message now uh, auto brakes will come to RTO and will arm the auto trouble and we are ready to taxi Everything is set. Transponder goes to altitude reporting off. And we'll release the parking brakes. Increase the throttles to 70% for takeoff config check. No horn, which means our takeoff config is correct. And we'll taxi to runway 06. So it's gonna take some time for me to taxi there rather than keeping you guys here. I will cut the video and bring you guys back when we are uh, ready to enter the runway. I'll see you in a little bit. Come back friends, we are approaching the hold short point of runway 06 at Sabia Gökçen International and we'll stop here momentarily and do our uh, before takeoff checklist. So that's the hold short point, let's slow down and stop here. Alright, I'll hold the brakes, go over the checklist, and we will line up. Parking brake, we are not going to set it, fuel flow, reset, and then rate. Center fuel pumps, we don't need them, we don't have any fuel in the center tank. DIs and cabin lights as required, flight instruments are checked, engine instruments are checked, normal. Takeoff data, we have V1 145, V rotate 145, V2 146 checked, navy equipment is checked, landing lights 
coming on. Runway turn off lights coming on as well. Taxi lights are going to come off. Transponder goes to TARA. Strobe lights coming on. And the traffic information for ND will put it on. And we'll also put the terrain here. They usually put weather here, terrain to the co-pilot, but we don't have a working weather radar just yet. So we will use terrain on ND. We'll start the block time and we'll line up. Before takeoff check if this is complete. And one thing I'm gonna discuss during climb is the descent planning and what we need to configure for descent. Uh, this flight has a very short cruise so that doesn't give me enough time to talk about everything. We will rather do that during climb and then I'll bring you guys back when we are ready to descent. Alright, we are now lined up. Hold our brakes here. Check the configuration one more time. All looking good. All looking good down there as well. And we are ready to do our takeoff roll. We'll increase the throttles to 40%. Let the engines stabilize. Release the tow brakes and you can click this secret toga button. Or if you have a button assigned like myself, you can press that too. That will put the uh, flight director to toga mode and we will maintain the runway center line and do our takeoff route. Airspeed alive. Checked. Eight knots. Checked. Coming up to V1. Rotate. rotate. We'll gently rotate to seven and a half degrees and then rotate more. This Positive is to avoid climb. tail strike. Positive grade of climb. Gear is coming up. We'll bring the range down to 10 miles and we will hand fly this part. Gear is retracted. We will increase the speed to clean flap speed of 210 and let the flight director guide us until there. We can also engage LNAV to get some guidance from the flight director. And we will follow the flight director and start retracting flaps. Flaps two, flaps one, and flaps up. still hand flying we are almost 2000 feet above the ground we don't need terrain anymore and one thing I haven't discussed is the barometric uh, minimums can be used to set your engine up procedure altitude we need to execute that turn now Still following the flight director and hand flying the aircraft, and we will engage the autopilot when we make this turn. Send steady. Nice, this aircraft handles very nice uh, when you are hand flying. I like it a lot. Alright, we will level the wings. Not just that much. We still have to complete the turn. And that looks like it. We'll activate VNAV and engage the autopilot. So now the autopilot will guide the aircraft. And we are waiting for 10,000 to turn off the landing lights we can turn off the runway turn off lights and do our after takeoff checklist 
Has the fate of climb clears up. Auto brakes are now coming off. It's off now. Uh, engine start switches back to off position. Gear lever is in the off position. Runway turn off lights are turned off. Cabin lights as required. After takeoff check is complete. Except passing 10,000 and turning the landing lights off. Nice departure from Sabia Gökçen. Beautiful scenery and Istanbul in the background. All right, one habit you can develop is to synchronize your heading to your current heading all the time, especially if you are flying on Red Sim or IVAO. Uh, this is very important because you may never know when the controller will give you a heading. So we reached our uh, 7000 initial climb altitude. We'll set our cruising altitude of 31,000 feet. And we should have passed that restriction. Yep, we did. So we can start climbing again. You can do this two ways. You can either click level change and back to VNAV or you can click altitude intervent and that should start the climb. Alright, we are climbing now. All looking nice. And while the aircraft is climbing, let's discuss what we need to do for descent. So when we look at the descent page of the FMC, we'll see 240, we will pick, correct that to 250, below, below 10,000, and then we have to enter the descent forecast. You can still use the ACARS or simulated ACARS if you download your flight plan in PMDG format and PMDG weather format, but I am going to enter this manually. So for you guys to be able to see, I'm gonna switch screens my friends over here for some reason i lost the audio but what i'm doing here is going to the end of the flight plan i get from simbrief and finding the descent winds and we are entering this wind information to the fmc starting with flight level 200 150 and 100 in order that's what's happening on the FMC in the upper right corner right now, entering the altitudes and then entering the wind information for each altitude one by one. This is done to have an accurate calculation of descent and taking winds into consideration when calculating the top of descent and the descent path. And that's why I'm taking this extra step to enter them in there. If you don't, it is still fine. The aircraft will probably manage the descent pretty well, but I like to do it like this way. We are also taking a look at the QNH here because that needs entered as well. And when it comes to the ISA deviation, standard ISA is 15 degrees Celsius. And as you see here, the temperature at Antalya is 22, so that's 7 degrees more than 15, and we are entering positive 7 to the ISA deviation on that page and executing after everything is in place. Yep, that's what I did here. Just wanted to record a voiceover to cover that piece of information instead of cutting this part of the video. Sorry about the uh, information I wasn't able to provide during the recording due to losing the audio and the last thing I'm checking here is the ILS frequency and setting the flaps for landing and we will be landing with flaps 40 and our reference speed is 142 knots according to the calculations from the FMC. That's what I did where I lost the video and I also pre-tuned the ILS frequency to the nav radios and after here, I also set the final approach course of 002 to both courses for the pilot and co-pilot side. And that's what you need to do to prepare for a descent, arrival and approach. While everything is in place, now it is uh, time for us to 
get to top of this end and start descending uh, into our arrival airport. Welcome back friends, we are very close to our top of descent and we will continue with before descent checks, checklist. Um, engine instruments checked, ok, fuel quantity is checked, we have 4.1 tons and if we take a look at the progress page we are expecting to land with 3.6 tons of fuel, more than enough. ADIS airport information is obtained, altimeter, we will set the local pressure, 1012. Radios are set for approach, MCP altitude, we need to reset that for aircraft to start descending and to be able to do that we need to take a look at our arrival chart and approach chart to see what altitude we need to descend to. Come on aircraft, you're so slow, please bring this up. Ah, oh, what happened? It's not loading the flight, we are almost there. Alright, something is definitely wrong with, with this now. Maybe it's the server connection? I'm not sure. But what we will do is we will set the altitude to 10,000 and check that later. Uh, for us to start descending. 10,000 is set. FMS approach speed reference is checked. We are landing at flat 40, speed 142. Localizer frequency is set to standby. Uh, ILS course is set, 002. De-icing is not required. Landing altitude is checked, that's 200. Recall, nothing crazy, radio altitude and barometric minimums, we need to see the chart to set that, and I'm not sure if it's going to display now, I have the charts open on the other screen, so I might as well use that if this is not gonna work, yep, so our arrival, we have a uh, 11,000 and above restriction and then the 3,000 hard restriction and for our approach we need to descend down to 3,000 and then 1,500 and for ILS straight and landing the minimum is 359 so 359 we'll set that to here that's set auto brake we will set that when we are close And that's for now. We have below the line only when we reach 10,000, but that's about it. When we hit top of descent, the aircraft will initiate the descent on its own. And we can drop the altitude down to 3,000. We now will do the calculations and get us down there while respecting all the restrictions we have. Alright, almost at top of descent now. Just about there, we should see the aircraft descending very shortly. Alright, taking longer than I expected. Right, top of descent. It's gonna the throttles back, retard will be seen here and then it's gonna start descending. You'll also start seeing the path deviation indicator. When you see a number above the bar that means you are below the descent path. If the number is at the bottom which mean, that means you are above the descent path but VNAV does a great job holding this for us and respecting the restrictions. So that's all we need to do one last thing is to go to the fix page and put runway 36 right here and we will draw a 10 mile ring around the runway that's our final 
and will draw a 25 mile ring around the runway this is where we should expect to receive the ILS signal that's usually between 25 to 30 miles when you start to receive the signal and this message here no descent path after Alpha India 515 that's where we expected through vectors I guess uh, but we will control that and see what we need to do if the VNAV doesn't descend below 11,000 alright that's about it and I'll bring you guys back when we are ready to execute our approach into runway 36 right in Antalya airport see you in a little bit welcome back friends we are getting closer to 10,000 and I wanted to bring you guys to talk about couple things we need to do we are getting close to the ring we placed at 25 miles so we should switch the radios to the frequency that we set for the ILS and we'll see the information here when we have the signal the other thing is we need to check our arrival chart our minimum sector altitude is 10,000 over here from where we are coming and we have a 11,000 and about or above restriction because we are going to be crossing over the Taurus mountains in southern Anatolia when we cross this that path is clear to descend down to 3,000 and then we'll make a turn to intercept the localizer also our arrival chart as you see here this is a procedure approach but we are not going to do the procedure because that requires us to cross over Limar Romeo Alpha VOR and do this pattern to intercept the localizer we will instead make a left turn and then activate the approach mode to capture the localizer and remember that message that we received saying no descent path and we are also seeing drag required so aircraft needs drag to slow down we'll put the speed brakes out to help the aircraft slow down and that is the waypoint Alpha India 515 where the FMC said there is no def descent path after this so we'll see what happens when we get there we see a small airport here I'm not seeing anything on the ND maybe it's a regional one I'm not sure we are coming to 12,000 that's the altitude where we transition from standard to local pressure and see the mountains oh man it started to get some turbulent air around here all right let's switch to standard 1012 well actually it's 1015 so the QNH I received from the METAR was wrong I'm glad I hit the B key and that's something I need to get better to check the ADIS or local weather when we are close so we are going to make a left turn to avoid the mountain range in front of us that's Antalya down below and coming up to 10,000 we can turn the seatbelt signs on and get ready to turn the landing lights on when we pass below 10,000 we are going to land with auto brakes 3 speed brakes can come in and we'll arm the speed brakes that's the green light here and they are armed now showing the speed brakes are armed coming down to 10,000 it appears like we will be approaching from the sea looks like it Right, we are still descending after passing that waypoint we need to slow down to 250 knots so let's put the speed brakes out again and landing lights are coming on I'm still not receiving the signal or the DME information hopefully we will after this turn I'm gonna double check the frequency hope not that one let's see here 
108.1 Sorry about that stutter, I'm not sure what happened there Could be the scenery Waiting for the ILS signal, hopefully we will receive it before it's too late That's the airport right there And if we don't receive the signal, we'll do something else. Do we have a VOR close by that we can keep on standby? In case things go south, yes, 116.15. Let's tune that as a secondary option. 116.15. Alright, that's set. And we started to see the Mediterranean coming down to 7,000 now. And we started to see the city on our left side. Beautiful. That's the airport. That's from May 36, right? We will be running towards that side to here. Still no sign of the ILS signal. I am a little bit curious. Not seeing it here as well. 108.1, 108.1. Interesting. Might be an air data issue. I'm gonna let the aircraft make this turn, it doesn't look terribly bad. And hopefully we will receive the other signal when we get to that turn. 2.20, when we get to that turn we're gonna start uh, introducing flaps or extending our flaps. And slowing the aircraft down to make the turn and not overshoot it because that's the center fix, that's the final fix we don't have too much left after that turn to configure the aircraft for landing luckily we started to see this signal you see here ILS Antalya, course 002 7.1 miles distance that takes away my worries the other thing you can check is pressing the center button twice will give you your vertical profile and the target altitude you set and I think we need to start thinking about bringing it down to 1500 to capture the glide slope all looks good here and we'll do before landing checklist or approach checklist rather I'm sorry Altimeters are checked and set, localizer frequency is checked, course is checked, approach we will arm, not just now, and we'll wait until we capture the glide slope for the rest of the uh, checklist. I don't need this here, I can put it on the co-pilot side if I need to check. Two twenty. We can open the speed instrument window and start controlling the speed ourselves. Coming up to the turn. Just a little bit more. Let's switch to ten mile wing or ten mile range. And we are looking okay. So we're looking okay. It's it's looking good. Now we can slow the aircraft down to 190 knots. When we are below 210, we'll go flaps one. Coming up there, so selecting flaps one. Right. Flaps 1 is set. Let's 
slow down further to 170 and set flaps 2 below 190 flaps 2 is set and we'll set flaps 5 below 180 flaps 5 set making the turn will activate or arm the approach and continue with the rest of the checklist flaps We'll set to 15 in a moment. We'll slow down to 150 now. Oops. Going to 10. Speed brakes are armed. Engine start switches goes to continuous for landing. Runway turn off lights, we will turn them on when we drop the landing gear. Alright, flaps 10, speed 150, landing gear down, flaps 15. We will set the MCP speed to our reference speed and keep introducing flaps until we have fully configured the aircraft. Twenty-five. Thirteen miles to the airport. We configured a little bit early, but it's better to be safe than sorry. You can wait to introduce flaps. I think this is a long stretch that you can perfectly configure the flaps while after remaking that turn. I was a little bit impatient, I guess, but it's up to you. Coming up to 10 mile final. And you can wait to drop the landing gear until you capture the glide slope. There is nothing wrong with it. I just configured early because when recording the video, things get busy very quickly. Not too much left. Actually, we slowed down, so it's taking longer for us to get to the center fix and then final fix but so be it it's gonna be a little bit more landing gear is down we can turn on the runway turn off lights nothing here and we are just waiting for the aircraft to capture the localizer and the glide slope We are slowly getting down to 1500. We can go flaps 30 now. Yes, it's not gonna hurt anything and it will help with descending to 1500. Flaps 4. Yep, early configuration, but there is nothing wrong with it. have a very short distance to runway and uh, we only need to descend down 1200 feet after capturing the glide slope so that is interesting we have an aircraft right there coming towards us on collision course trying to land I guess and that's what the TCAS system is warning us I need to record a video about the TCAS system and how to read the icons and the data on the screen uh, but I'll do it on a separate video. We are finally at the center fix and looks like that aircraft is landing to runway 36 left and seems to be on approach course to the runway. I hope he is not trying to land to the same runway though. That might ruin the video. Go away please, you're not landing there. Alright, localizer is captured. We are waiting for the glide slope to, to be captured. And then that's going to be it for us.
not seeing any puppies just yet that aircraft is also seems like landing to the same runway uh, from the landing gear that's interesting hopefully he will land before us and we will follow him into the runway almost at the final fix very calm weather we are landing with headwind of 8 knots at this point I'm waiting for the glide slope glide slope is now captured aircraft is descending we can set the missed approach altitude 3000 feet and we are ready to land so landing checklist go around altitude is set runway turn off lights are on landing gear is checked and down three green autopilot as required auto thrust as required thrust reverse oh that's after touchdown we don't have time to do the checklist but i know what to do when we touch down One approaching 1000 checked that aircraft is still in front of us so hopefully he will vacate the runway before Traffic. we land Traffic. yeah nice right it's time to disengage the autopilot I plane now and we will disarm the auto throttles momentarily we are going a little bit low Let's pull the nose up just a little bit and follow the puppies. I'm barely seeing the puppies by the way. It's too bright outside, but looks like we are on a good approach course. A little bit high now. Correcting for that. What? Okay, we are good. Oh, the tribal disengaged. And 100. Checked. Continue. 30. 20. Yeah. Good flow the landing here. Ground effect is still in place. But we are down. Reversers are engaged. Center line. And I'm gonna start manual braking. The brakes are off, reversers are off and we'll take this high-speed exit to vacate the runway all right very nice flaps are coming up speed brakes are in welcome to Antalya we'll momentarily stop here to clean up the aircraft we probably need to make a left turn to the terminal Let's just stop here, even here is too late. Bending lights are coming off now. Taxi lights on, runway turn off lights off. We'll start the APU. Ignition switches to off. Strobe can come off, back to steady, not that one. And that's pretty much it. And the APU should start now, and we can taxi to the runway, uh, to the terminal. Not too bad, I guess. Landing was a little bit floaty, but we were at 200 feet per minute, roughly. A little less, so I'll take it. Um, we'll solid circle around and go to the terminal building to find the parking spot to park the aircraft. I'm gonna check the taxi chart real quick. All right, yep, we are definitely going to take a right turn from here and park at apron 2 
which is on our right side right there. So I need to uh, find the proper entry and I'm not seeing it so let's take a look. Oh there it is, right in front of us. Now let's slow down just a little bit, we are too fast for that turn. Turn right from here. Back see to the terminal. Nice. There is the terminal. And we can park to any of these stands too. Why it's stuttering this much I'm not sure. That might be due to the background programs I'm running to record the video. But we will aim for this gate over here with the jetway. Let's see here. Yep, that sounds like a plan. And we will aim for that from probably from the next turn we need to take. Looks like this. Maybe not. But we'll find a way. Oh, that was it. Yep, that was it. Alright, let's slow it down. We should have a parking rider system over there. Not sure if it's working. We are just about in the right spot. I'll stop here and take a look. Just a little bit more. I was a little early. There we go. Alright, we'll stop here. Set the parking brakes. APU is online. Yep. APU is on the bus, two blue, one red, engines are dead. So we'll put the switches to engines, switches to cutoff position, open the lower DU, and when we are below 20% N2, we can turn off the anti collision lights. APU bleed comes on, engine bleeds, I will turn them off now. Twenty percent anti-collision lights are coming off. Taxi lights off. Fuel pumps are coming off. And isolation valve open. And recirculation fans to all off. Probe heat window heat is now coming off. Yard damper can come off too. And we'll go to the FMC, what happened there. And put the chocks in place, request the ground power unit. And call the jetway. Hmm. This is not gonna do it. Anyway, we are here for the flight, I guess. Let's reset this camera, get a good view. Welcome to Antalya, and I hope you guys enjoyed this flight with the 737-800. If you did, please consider giving the video, giving the video a like, and if you are not a channel subscriber, please take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button. It means a lot and helps the channel a lot too. Again, thanks for being here with me today, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.